Hello everyone. Previously, we discussed the design and the analysis for a single factor experiment. Now, how should we design and analyze our experiment when we have two or more experimental factors? These are the aims of the lecture. Previously, we consider only single factor experiments. A factor is a categorical variable which can take one or more values called levels. When we have more than one factors, we can either combine the levels of these factors and use the single factor ANOVA or use a factorial design. In a factorial design, we are interested in the interaction between the factors. Do you know why? Because when there is interaction, the main effects could not be used to predict the response variable. Let's see an example. Let's see two possible results in this experiment. The first result shows there is no interaction between P and K. When there is no interaction, the ranking for each factor does not depend on the level of the other factor. So we can predict the yield for each treatment by adding the effects of the main factors. For example, the yield for K1, P0, can be calculated by adding the effect of K1 and P0 to the grand mean. The second result show interaction between P and K. When there is interaction, the ranking of one factor depends on the level of the other factor. We cannot predict for each treatment by adding the effects of the main factors. For example, the yield for K1 P0 cannot be calculated by just adding the effect of K1 and P0 to the grand mean. In our experiments, we partition the total variability into the variability due to treatment, 
and the variability due to the residuals. Factorial experiments are treatment designs. These designs are used to partition the treatment variance into the variance due to main effects and interaction. Blocking designs are used to reduce the experimental error variance by partitioning it into the variance due to blocking factors and variance due to random residuals. A treatment design is used in conjunction with a blocking designs. For example, a 2x2 two two factorial RCBD. When we have two factors, factors A with A levels and factor B with B level set up as a CRD with R replication, the skeleton ANOVA is When we have two factors, factor A with A levels and factor B with B level set up as an RCBD with R blocks, the skeleton ANOVA is 
when we have two factors, factors A with A levels and factor B with B levels, set up as Latin square with the number of rows and the number of columns. The skeleton ANOVA. In a factorial experiment, we must first test for the hypothesis about the interaction. When there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, we cannot test the main effects. When there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, we can then test for the main's effects. Let's see an example. 
first do a skeleton ANOVA for this analysis. Because it is a factorial experiment, we should create an interaction plot. Based on this interaction plot, it seems there is no or very little interaction between N and P. Based on the ANOVA, we can conclude that the interaction between N and P is not significant at 5% significance level. Therefore, we can test for the main effect of N and P. The main effect of NP are both significant at 5% significance level. Let's compare this result with the result from a single factor RCBD where we combine the N and P into six treatments. Because the analysis was done using the same data, the total sum of square between these two analyses are the same. The degree of freedoms and the sum of square are the same for the residuals and the blocks. The factorial experiment split the treatment sum of square into three components. The sum of square of the two main effects and the sum of square of the interaction. The factorial experiment also enable us to test for the interaction. We can expand the number of factors to more than two. This is known as a multi-factors experiment. We use a multi-way ANOVA to analyze this type of experiment. Let's see an example of a three-factor factorial with RCBD.
when there are more than two factors, the analysis becomes increasingly complex. In a two-factor experiment, we only have a first order or two factors interaction, which is relatively easy to interpret. In three factors experiment, we will also have a second order or a three factors interaction, which is more difficult to interpret. The following table show the factorial growth of the complexity. In a multi-factors experiment, the number of experimental units needed for a complete replicate may be prohibitively large. The number of experimental units is determined by the number of treatments and the number of replications. Ideally, we should have at least 12 degrees of freedom for residuals. So, when we have three factors, each with two levels, we have eight treatments. For two replications, the residual degrees of freedom is less than 12. So we need at least three replications and 24 experimental units to have the residual degree of freedoms more than 12. When we have three factors, each with three level, we have 27 treatments and would require 54 experimental units to have two complete replications. As the number of treatment increases, we will require larger blocks to fit all the treatments. Experimental units in a large block are unlikely to be uniform and will increase the experimental error variance. In a multi-factors experiment, we can reduce the number of experimental units required by using the principle of confounding. There are several options. One, we confine the higher order interaction with blocks. We assume that the higher order interaction is negligible. Two, we use fractional replication, where we only have a fraction of the treatment combination. With proper choice, each main effect is aliased with a higher order interaction. However, the results from this setup are subject to mis misinterpretation. Three, we use unreplicated experiment. In this case, we use the higher order interaction as experimental error. This approach will affect the calculation and interpretation of the F statistics. Let's see two examples of the factorial experiment with no replication. For a two factors experiment, For a three-factors experiment, 
Notice that we use the highest order interaction as the experimental error. So it changed the interpretation of the F statistics. In general, experiments with a large number of factors should be regarded as explanatory. They should be carried out to discover which factors may be important and two or three factors experiments can be carried out. Now, can you do this?